Cleaning Nation. Welcome back to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast. As always, we're going to start the show by telling you that you are amazing. This show exists for you and only because you share, you like, you review, you rate, you give us all the love. And because of that, we keep putting out a metric ton of content to help you grow your cleaning company and try to have a little bit of fun while we're doing it. Today, we are chatting with my brand new best friend, Stella Tellez, owner of SNA Janitorial Services. SNA has been serving as another Arizona person. I'm so excited. Never gets to talk to people in Arizona, but this is my friend to the south or east. I can't remember. I think south in Tucson, Arizona. They've been doing commercial cleaning for the last couple of years. Stella, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Mike. I'm excited to be here with you. Excited to have you, sister. So when did you lose your mind and decide it would be a good idea to, to become, to get into the commercial cleaning business? It was probably a couple months before um, February of 2015. Um, my husband, you know, had retired from the service. He went back as a contractor. He wanted something other to, other than IT things to do. And he said, what is it that we could do, baby? And I said, you know what? Let's try a cleaning company. And that's where it all started. I love that story. And we, yeah, if I, if I was you, I would have that on my way. I'd have that somewhere. That's a cool story. I think that I would, I would absolutely share that. Well, what's going on in your world today that hopefully I can give you a little help with? Well, I'm a little stuck, Mike, trying to get um, businesses. You know, I pick, I pick three niches. And out of those three niches, I'm trying to go out there, finding the right people to educate them on um, how to hire a cleaning company and what is it that they're looking for in a cleaning company. Most of them don't know. Okay. So just out of curiosity, because I am a cleaning company nerd, what three niches did you pick? Uh, I picked dental, I picked um, pet places, I picked um, banks. All right. Dental, I love because there's lots of them and they absolutely need cleaning. What's a pet place? I don't that. What's that mean? A veterinarian. Um, Got it. So a lot of vet places here in Tucson, I don't, I'm sure there's a lot in Phoenix as well, but um, yeah, they're hospitals for your animals. Yeah, that's a great idea because I'm sure they have very specific needs. And then same with banks. I'm sure they have very specific needs that are different than the other two. So first and foremost, I would encourage you to pick one and start with that. Um, not that you won't accept any work from anyone else, but let's put a, you know, light when focus can cut through 10 inches of steel when diffused is nothing. So I really want to encourage you to focus, focus, focus. You'd be shocked at how well you'll do picking one of those niches. Uh, and really crushing it as opposed to trying to do three at one time. Um, so that's the first thing I have. Second thing, let's talk about how to get them. And I love that you get that you're in the education business. We will make so much more money educating people than we make cleaning crap. Uh, cleaning crap is perceived at $10 an hour, but helping people get results and change their lives and teaching them how to make their life better, you can charge just about anything you want for that. So that's a good part. Now, um, that's going to look different for, again, this is why we niche, because the way that um, veterinarians go about solving their problem slash pain is going to be different than the way that dentists do it and different from the way bank people do it. Within that universe, the person that you need to talk to will change, right? At a veterinarian uh, place, it might, and I'm totally making this up because I don't know, it might be the vet himself or herself does all of that. They make all the decisions at a dentist's office. It might be, well, if there's zero to one dent or zero, if there's one to two dentists, the dentist or his wife makes that decision or her, his, her husband, the dentist or their spouse makes that decision. But generally from three to five, they've got an office manager. Don't know. Bank, same thing might be, well, at certain banks they've got, they make that's made on a local level. Other banks is made on a national level. There's all these kind of nuances that you need to get. And if you're trying to get all three at once, it's going to be an uphill battle. So First and foremost, we uh, I love that you are wanting to be in the in the education business because that's that pays better than the cleaning business. But again, we've got to get um, we've kind of got to get we need another pain and then we can solve it. So let's just pick one. Uh, you don't have to pick this forever, but let's just pick one and talk about how to get them uh, to know, like, and trust you. So you tell me which one if you had to decide right now, which would it be, and we'll we'll talk about them. I believe it would be dental. Okay, so let's do dental. And you might find, and the beautiful thing about dental, and this is shocking, I read somewhere there are more dentists in the United States than McDonald's. So a lot of people are like, oh, how many dentists could there be? You would be shocked. I'll bet you in a town like Tucson, which isn't that big, there are probably hundreds, maybe not thousands, but there are hundreds of dentist offices. So 
if that's going to be your niche, the first thing I would do is try and find out what, they, first of all, find out if they have pain, right? Because they're only a good niche if they have pain. So if they if you talk to 10 dentists and they're all like, yeah, had a cleaner for the last seven years, four years, three or whatever, never had a problem. Uh, they're great. That's a terrible niche, right? You want to talk to people like, oh my gosh, if I have to talk to my cleaning company one more time, I am going to spit. These people are just ready to be choked and I'm, I could, I'm going to punch somebody in the face. That's who we want. Um, the next thing you want is money, right? Did they have enough money to pay for it? And generally dentists do. Um, so that's the first thing is kind of a, make sure they have pain. Um, and I know that you, we talked off air, you said that you remember the clean profit method. So you've got access to the perfect profit prospect survey. Um, and you'd mentioned, which is just, it's just a form. It's just, it's just a format of the questions to ask to help get their pain and make sure you get all the things that you need. But you said you were having trouble getting people to respond, correct? They don't, they're not interested uh, in giving you any information. Correct. Okay. So the way we do that is we deal with the pain of the person we're talking with. So, um, do you have a, a, a gut feeling yet? If it's the, the person that's answering the phone, I'm guessing is generally not the person that makes a decision for the janitorial services. Right. The person answering the phone is just like weeding out, um, whatever they have to weed out as far as like, um, people who are soliciting, um, people who just want, uh, maybe to give, um, yeah, I got yeah, it. it's the first, yeah. Yeah. So again, instead of fighting against that pain, let's let's go with the flow, right? So their job is to get Yahoo's keep the Yahoo's away from the dentist or whoever the decision maker is. Do, just so I, I know who to call them. Do you have a feeling it's uh, the office manager or the dentist that's ultimately going to be making the decision? I believe in most cases it's going to be the office manager. So let's pretend it's the office manager, and the the receptionist's job is to keep Yahoo's away from the office manager. No problem. Just don't be a Yahoo, right? You're not selling anything. You're really just trying to bring value to them. So I would call, and again, we're going to talk about how to do the call, but then we're going to talk about something even more interesting, which is we don't have to call them, right? A lot of people are kind of stuck in, we got to either go knock on a door. Um, I don't want to say it's unprofessional, but you're going to get a bad result. People generally are doing what they're doing and you're saying, stop doing what you're doing and pay attention to me. People don't like to do that, whether you knock on the door or answer the phone. So um, the good news is all you have to do is not sound like a salesperson. So don't call up and say, hi, my name is Stella. I'm with um, SNA Janitorial Services. And I was just wondering if you had five minutes to, just by my tone, even if you didn't speak English, you would go, oh, I know this person's a salesperson, right? That <laughs> I'm assuming in every language, salespeople have that same sing-songy like voice. If you called and said, uh, hey, this is Stella, what's up? I promise you they're not going to hang up. They're going to go, this is Mike. How can I help you? You go, well... I don't know if I can, you can't help me because I'm way beyond help. I need a huge favor and you're probably not, you're probably all out of favors today, right? Do you see how I, do I, you may like that or not like it, but I do not sound like a salesman, right? Is there any fear that maybe a salesman, maybe, but not like any salesperson they've heard. They're going to probably go, well, what, what do you want? Say, well, I need 10 minutes of the office manager's time, but your job is to keep dirty salespeople out of the thing. But I'm not a dirty salesperson, but you don't know that. So where do I go from here? Do you see how I'm just talking to them like a human being, not like a salesperson? Um, I would yeah. say stuff like, if you were me, what would you do? What charity do I got to give to? Do I got to bake fre fresh cookies? I literally just need seven and a half minutes of asking this guy or gal questions. And if I try and sell one thing, I give you permission to come in and punch me right in the face. Like if you just talk to them like that so they understand you're not selling anything and hey, you're fun, right? That's that. And I promise yeah. you, they love cookies and food and chocolate. So if you bring food, you're almost always welcome. So that's how I would do that if I was going to go about it by phone. That said, I wouldn't go about it by phone. I would automate and create bait that they're interested in. What you're doing, what, we're, what that role play we just did is trying to take bait they're not interested in and pitch it up. Let, let me, this bait's really good. I know it doesn't sound like it's good bait, but it's good bait. That's a hard job. Um, I would create something that they are interested in or you think that they're interested in and put it out there for them. So if I'm a dentist, I probably am interested in um, more patients. I'm probably interested in happier patients. I'm probably interested in, I'm trying to think of other things that I'm interested in. Uh, and you can even ask them, all right, fine. Don't, don't talk to me. He's not going to talk to me. If I had to go create something that, that he absolutely had to have, what would it be? What's his number one, the office or her the office manager, what's his or her number one thing that keeps him up at night. And if whatever they say, Let's create something like that. So for me, it's a podcast, right? Instead of calling you, hey, Stella, this is Mike. I'm a really good coach. You should give me money and I'll help you grow your cleaning company. Almost guaranteed I'm going to get hung up on. But I create a podcast that just helps you, just right, flat out does it, helps you grow your cleaning company, right? And what happens is I can do this podcast once and thousands of people listen to it. And then even if 993 of them are like, this guy's an idiot, I wouldn't give him money to 
walk my dog. Um, the seven, the girl, I'm totally into it. And that's more than I can handle for work. So I just, instead of asking you, how can I help you? I just start helping you. So we're going to do the same with dentists. And there's a hundred ideas. We could send them email on here's 10 quick ways to build a practice. Um, we could do a lunch and learn where we feed them and give them a presentation on, you know, how health, how, how, uh, how accepting or not accepting uh, health insurance can kill your practice. Um, you could be a little more on the nose and be like seven things that you your your janitor is doing that'll rob you blind. But you want to put out content, whether it's a blog, a podcast, a lunch and learn, an ebook, an actual book, um, a YouTube channel, uh, a trade show at a dentist association meeting. I don't know if they have those in Tucson. Um, but you want to kind of go where they're at and then create content that they're going to be interested in and let them come to you so much better when you call me and go, Mike, I've listened to every one of your podcasts and I feel like I already know you and you're the best thing since sliced bread. Can I give you some money? Much better conversation than, Hey, Stella, I'm Mike and I'm really good at coaching. Will you please give me some money? That's like a dial tone. So I, I know I'm going kind of quick. Any, give me your thoughts or give me a little feedback uh, before I move forward. So what you're telling me is to create maybe a flyer. Uh, email something that attracts them so that they'll contact me back. A flyer's tough. Um, there's flyers. I've never gotten anything of value on a flyer. A book, like you might have a book, Seven Deadly Sins Dentists Make um, that put them out of business or that make them miserable. Well, shoot, if I'm a dentist, I might read that, right? But if it's a flyer, um, that's the sales. That's sales material. So I'd put it as a book or an ebook or a white paper. Uh, find out what dentists read, right? There, you know, if it's you know, white paper is probably the what I titled or a book. Um, and yes, I would create things that are of value to them that get them attracted to you. The good thing is dentists are terrible marketers. Uh, just by knowing, just by listening to the show, you can probably give them some ways to make their or ten ways to get um, five five star reviews on Google in the next ten days. You could probably figure out a way to help your dentist do that, and he'd be interested in that. If you, if you wanted, you could even say, hey, for every one of our new customers, I'll tell you how, it's to hire us for your janitorial service or just let us bid. For everyone that you bid, we get you five uh, five star or let us get you five five star reviews first and then we'll, then, we'll, then we'll come bid your thing. You wanna give value in advance. Most people call and say, give me something. Let me bid, tell me, you know, help me, give me, I wanna grow my business, you help. Tell me how I can do what I wanna do. Um, and people aren't interested in that. But if you call him and say, hey, how do I help you do what you wanna do? They're much more interested in that. So I would find a way to give value in advance. For me, it's a podcast. For you, it might be, let me do a free cleaning. Let me, like I said, get you five five-star reviews from your customers. And all you have to do is call their customer and say, hey, I'm with Dr. Rhodes' office. Um, did, you have a good, did you have a good experience? Um, if I come out there and give you a hug, could I get you give them a good review? I mean, <laughs> you could find a way to, to get good reviews for Dr. Rhodes. Um, I'll, let me give you a $10 gift certificate is whatever. Um, so the big thing is you want to give value in advance, right? With a podcast, I do a bunch of, I don't tell you I could coach you. I just do a bunch of coaching and people are like, I like that. So instead of telling dentists, you can, uh, you can help them try and help them, right? Say, Hey, let me give you a free cleaning. Let me, uh, let me get you some reviews. Let me get you a new customer, find a way to serve them and then let them come to you. And if you can serve enough people, you, you'll be, you'll be beating them off with a stick. They, they'll line up to, to do business with you. I know it's a big concept, but it's, it's so much easier to put out things that are attractive to, to put out good bait and let them come to you as opposed, I mean, it's the difference of fishing at the side with good bait versus trying to jump into the lake and try and grab fish. Like it's, it's, you could do it. It's possible. It's just, it's a bear and you get cold doing it. Um, Questions, comments, rude remarks? No, no, no. That sounds good. I mean, I know how to add value to people's lives. I do it all the time. So that would be an easy thing. It's just um, then after I add that, then that's when I go in and I can have them do that survey that we have. Well, the survey is to find out what they what their pain is. So you're going to have an idea of what, the, yeah. So you might even say, if I get your review, will you take the survey? Or if I bake you cookies, or if I, if I have my family come in and be your, have you do my teeth cleaning or refer you somebody to do a teeth. You, there's a, there's a hundred ways to have them do something, but you don't want to call them and start with, Hey, do this for me. Um, you at least want to right. do something for them. So, Hey, I'll give you, I'll, I will give $25 or $50 to the, to the charity of your choice. If you'll give me six and a half minutes to tell me what. Okay. Of your time. That's it. And if I sell something, I'll double it. If I try and sell you one thing, move that $25 gift certificate, make it a $500 gift certificate. And then of course, don't try and sell them something. You owe them 500 bucks. But um, <laughs> the, the thing is, don't go in with how can you help me? What can you do for me? Go in with how can I enrich your life and make it better? And um, 
Robert Caldini in the book called Influence, a really good book. He talks about the, I think there's seven pillars of influence. And one of them is, is the concept of reciprocity. Uh, and the Hare Krishna folks built an entire, or financed an entire religion on this. Uh, in the 70s, they would sit at airports and um, give out flowers. And you would just take a flower because someone hands you a flower. And then they would ask you for money. And you kind of feel like a jerk for not giving them something because they just gave you a flower. And the funny thing is they would do it 20 feet ahead of a trash can. Everyone would walk by, take the flower, put it in the trash. And then they would just wait five minutes, go pick up all the flowers and, and <laughs> do the same thing again. But okay. Yeah, but they, yeah. they started by giving someone um, something for free. He did it, they did another uh, research where they had people, they, they went out with people um, to like this museum opening and they did like certain amount of tests and certain amount of others. Half of them, the, during, at the middle of the night, he would go away uh, to get a Coke and come back with two Cokes, one for the person he was with and one for himself. The other half, he just brought one back for himself. At the end of the night, he asked all of them for to donate to some sort of charity or do something. And the responses was like 50% better for the people he had brought a 50 cent Coke for. So people have this, are wired to, oh, you've done something nice for me. I'd like to do something nice for you back. We just need to find out something nice you can do for Dennis as opposed to, uh, and, then, and then let them do. So again, this podcast, a lot of people, I, I do zero sales. I never call anyone or try and sell anyone anything. I just put out a bunch of content and you guys come to me in droves. That's all we got to figure out what the podcast is for dentists. And it might be a podcast, right? Dentists might listen to podcasts and might like anything, whether it be comedy or how to grow your dental practice or how to save money or how to be a better dentist or how to get better reviews or how to make your wife like your husband, like you, whatever, whatever dentists are into. We just want to figure out how to give that to them. And then when it comes time to choose a cleaning company, you're first in line. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Thank you. Cool. Any follow-up questions or is it time for the lightning round? I'll give you the chance to uh, uh, show off your genius for a little bit. Oh, I have no geniuses, but that's okay. Oh, no. I'm going to test uh, it. I beg to differ, young lady. Not only do you have genius, but I've got three magic questions that will allow you to showcase said genius in a, in a delightful manner. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? See, you can steal someone else, else's genius right now and claim it for your own. It'll be fine. I was told many years ago, um, that your given name means everything in the world. You may not have a penny to your name, but if you say you're going to do something and you're going to do it correctly, that's what you do. And it means the world. People will always remember, hey, she told me this is what she was going to do and she did it. I got to say, sad state of affairs, but the truth of the matter is I have found in both residential and commercial cleaning if you just do what you say you're going to do, you're better off than, I mean, this is sad, but 90, 95% of the folks out there in terms of we'll be here at this time, well, whatever, you just keep your word. You are in a class by yourself just by not being of low integrity. Sadly, that's absolutely true. And this is not a better time in the world to be a person of integrity because you stand out like a sore thumb in a very good way. What's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business so we can uh, learn from it and try and make different mistakes? The first thing I did was um, going in and talking to a franchise um, place that they sell you a franchise mm -hmm. and they offer you the world and they give you nothing in return. And That's a terrible you, sales thing, by the way. We offer the world and give you nothing in return. They should really reword that. You know, so... Mm -hmm. Um, that was the biggest mistake I ever did. And, um, I'm glad that I branched off on my own and I had the help of my son and my husband to back me up. So that's the greatest thing. Um, let me ask you, let me ask you a quick follow-up question and don't name the, the name of the, uh, the franchise. Cause we're certainly not here to, you know, say who's good or bad, but I know there's other people in that situation. They get scared to go out on their own. how you, can you just give us a 60 second kind of overview of how you made that transition from franchisee that wasn't working to doing your own thing? You know what? It's having faith in yourself and what you believe in and knowing that you can give out a better product um, by yourself other than using that franchise's name or marketing because it really doesn't do you anything. Sometimes that might hurt you versus helping your business but being truthful honest and doing a great job and 
going out there, people see that and they say, hey, you know, you have a card. And I always give them my business card because that's we're open that's our business and we're the ones that are providing this service for you okay cool. so it's a, it's a it's a jumping into that big pool of water with two feet and just going for it all right love it that's fantastic feedback last question what's one idea cleaning nation could put into practice right away something easy to implement um that can improve their lives or their business even a little bit just something easy to implement kind of quick you know what? I think when I look at the the Facebook page, I see a lot of people asking for the answer. They want they want somebody else to figure out the problem for them and give them the answer. I say research it, take a few extra minutes. Um, find if you can't do it yourself, find somebody who can that's working for you, and uh, go from there. Because what might work for one will not work for the other. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was just a one size fits all answer. I could just do one long podcast and just that'd be the end of it. But <laughs> it really does depend who you are, where you're at, where, what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so that's that's great feedback is you got to be able to contextualize feedback given from other people and kind of know how that fits in your life and your goals. Um, Stella, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing your story, your passion, your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I know the Clean Nation appreciates you. Clean Nation, if you want to check out Stella's show notes page along with everything I know about how to grow a cleaning company, there is so much cool free stuff, paid stuff at growmycleaningcompany.com. I actually just, just put up a video that's like a long on, uh, on-demand on video training that if you like this podcast or uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, you're going to love that. Growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.